Let's uh, head to the phones. Our uh, next guest, the uh, Deputy Director of the Bipartisan Coalition for Public Safety, uh, joining us uh, here on the program. Uh, they are meeting down in Austin uh, today at the Texas Public Policy Foundation, uh, the Coalition for Public Safety and Right on Crime, joining forces. Uh, and joining us right now is Lance Lemons. Lance, good morning. How are you? Hey, good morning, Chad. I appreciate you having us on this morning. Absolutely. Uh, y'all are getting together down in Austin at the Texas Public Policy Foundation, and uh, we've had on the uh, folks from there uh, quite a few times. Tell us a little bit about uh, your organization and uh, what y'all are doing with partnering up with Ride on Crime. Yeah, uh, Chad, the Coalition for Public Safety is the uh, the largest uh, organization uh, in the country that's working on this issue. And uh, Right on Crime is actually one of the eight original uh, uh, partners uh, in this endeavor. Uh, the other partners uh, in this organization are, is very diverse. Uh, it's a coalition of, of both the left and the right. Uh, and uh, it's, uh, you know, it, it's very wide-ranging across the spectrum. I mean, we're talking about the ACLU, Americans for Tax Reform, the Center for American Progress, the Faith and Freedom Coalition, uh, Freedom Works Leadership Conference, NAACP, and, and as I referenced, Right on Crime is uh, one of our uh, one of our eight partner organizations. So yeah, that's uh, a pretty diverse group there. <laughs> yeah, it really is. And, <laughs> and on a on a personal level, uh, I, I come from uh, from the right, uh, so to speak, through my career, and uh, you know, it, it was quite uh, it was quite shocking to be sitting down with leaders from those other organizations uh, when this organization first got rolling uh and and to think you know that despite all of our disagreements that there was one thing that we all coalesced around and uh, it was uh, it was quite encouraging and uh, and it continues to be encouraging well this is a uh, criminal uh, criminal justice uh, reform panel uh something that has been talked about uh, quite a bit actually here in the state of texas as you know uh but but tell us what uh, what y'all are aiming for what y'all will be discussing today yeah, today uh, here in Austin, uh, once again partnering with our friends at Right on Crime and the Texas Policy Foundation, uh, we want to focus uh, on how Texas has effectively reformed its state system, and even you know not not just as important, but uh, but maybe even more so is that a lot of other states, and now believe it or not, starting uh, starting in the past couple of weeks in Washington D.C. The, the effective reforms that Texas has taken on, the ones that have, you know, they've been extremely effective. Uh, they saved the Texas taxpayers, uh, you know, hundreds of millions of dollars. Uh, they've, de- you know, de- crime has decreased in the state. And we think that it's, uh, it's a great model for other states to, uh, to focus on. And at the same time, uh, you know, it's also trickled up to Washington, D.C. And Texas's own Senator John Cornyn has really led, led a lot of the efforts in Washington to uh, you know, to take these reforms to the federal system, and we're finally seeing a lot of that work come to fruition. Uh, we had uh, a Senate package announced a week ago. Uh, our understanding is uh, actually maybe happening at this moment. Uh, House Judiciary Chairman Bob Goodlatte is introducing a, uh, a companion bill in the U.S. House. And so we want to talk and tell the people of Texas how effective uh, these reforms have been within the state. And also, I, I think it's something for Texans to be proud of that this is this has gone out into other states, and other states have said we can do this too. And I, and I think I think Texas is led by example. For, for those who may have this, no idea about these reforms that you're talking about, uh, give us some insight on on, on what reforms uh, you guys are discussing today. Yeah, today uh, a lot of it had to do with changing the way that the state and now hopefully the federal the federal system deals with first time nonviolent uh, low level drug offenders and and not you know not getting rid of punishment but diverting them from prison to treatment programs and instead of you know focusing on let's just lock them up throw away the key that it's a new approach to parole and probation. Uh, it, it sort of moved a lot of resources around to treatment and rehabilitation programs. And what it's done uh, has really turned – it's reduced recidivism. And, and recidivism, for those of us, uh, you know, kind of walkish on this, on this topic, is kind of a big word. But it just means stopping the cycle of incarceration where we lock someone up, we release them into society thinking, you know, that, oh, okay, they've served their time. Uh, you know, hopefully they can rebuild their lives, but in reality, not giving them the help to rebuild their lives. And so we're making it, you know, making it easier and better for ex-offenders to reenter society so that they don't come back into the system later. We're talking about uh, criminal justice reform, and uh, that's what uh, 
uh, Lance and uh, others will be talking about down in Austin today. Uh, you mentioned low-level, nonviolent uh, offenders in this. Are, are these people who are, uh, are, are, are selling drugs or uh, using drugs, or is it a mix? Or, you know, and, you know I, I guess, you know, for those who may be concerned about it, um, you know, what, what kind of offenders do you all look at specifically? Sure. Uh, I, I can't speak specifically to what, uh, to what Texas law enforcement has, uh, has really focused on as, as far as the individual offenses go. But if you, if you look at it, there are, there are many instances to where those, fo- those folks who are truly polluting, uh, you know, portions of the population with, with drugs, uh, with illegal gun, with, you know, with other things, there, there are safeguards that have been, been put in to where, you know, those offenders, we are still continuing to put them through the system the way in which it was intended. And what we really wanted to do and, and what a lot of other states are looking for is how do we divert, you know, the low level, uh, someone who may have had uh, marijuana or another drug for recreational use, uh, but maybe had, you know, maybe the limit was extremely low, and it was for personal use, but we charged them with distribution and, and other crimes like that, is is just throwing them away, locking them up for 20 years without any sort of rehabilitation to get them off of, you know, get them substance abuse uh, counseling. Is, is that really how the best way to spend taxpayers' money? And honestly, is that the best way to keep the public safe? And what you know, what what the studies have shown is that it's not the best way to keep people safe, and it it's it, it's it costs us way too much money, um, and many times it, it turns you know these low level nonviolent offenders into very more serious offenders later on. That's very it, it is an interesting topic and uh, one where the in the state of Texas, as you brought up earlier, has been one of the leaders uh, in this area. And Governor uh, former Governor Rick Perry was a uh, leader on this. Uh, Lance, uh, Lance Lemons, the uh, deputy director of the uh, Coalition for Public Safety. Lance, how can people find more information, uh, uh, not only about this topic, but about your organization as well? Well, Ted, uh, matter of fact, I encourage your, your audience to, uh, they'll actually be able to watch, uh, watch this, uh, today's panel discussion here in Austin, uh, actually be able to watch it online on our website. Uh, the website is coalitionforpublicsafety.org. Uh, it's all one website. And if you go to our, uh, our Get Involved page, you will see the, uh, today's event and it will be live streamed, uh, free online. And, uh, we encourage everyone to, uh, to tune in. Uh, we've got a great panel, including, uh, former chairman of the Texas House of Representatives Corrections Committee, Jerry Madden, uh, Doug Smith from the Texas Criminal Justice Coalition, Greg Glaude from here at Right on Crime, and Terry Burke from ACLU of Texas. We'll all be on the panel uh, that I'm moderating, and I hope everyone takes, takes a minute to tune in at 10 a.m. this morning. All right, Lance Lemons, Deputy Director, Coalition for Public Safety, uh, getting together with Right on Crime and others down in Austin today. Appreciate your time today. Thank you so much, Chad. I appreciate it. Have a good one. Okay, bye-bye. That's uh, Lance Lemons uh, with the the Deputy Director for the Coalition on Public Safety joining us here on the Chad HD Show.